let's take a quick look at co-ops. Co-ops are not something that we have a lot of here in Hampton Roads. Um, mostly they are retirement communities and there I believe is a building or two near Old Dominion University that are still co-ops. But Atlantic Shores is pretty much the only big co-op I know for sure of in this area. So in a nutshell, I've put this little cheat sheet together. A co-op is also known as a housing cooperative, type of housing owned by a corporation made up of owners within the co-op. So the corporation owns all of the building, interior, exterior, and all the common areas. So instead of buying the property as in a traditional sale, you're buying a share of the corporation that controls the co-op and that then entitles you to living space in that building. So co-ops are typically more common in crowded cities. Washington DC, New York City, New York City has the largest number of co-ops of any other city in the United States. So when you buy into a co-op, you don't get a piece of property with a standard deed, you get a share in that project. And they're typically managed without any aim of getting a profit. They're, they don't intend to show a profit each, each year. And every shareholder tenant shares in the expenses for maintenance and services for the building. So unlike condos, in a condo you have a deed and you own walls in, in a condo. You own the interior of that building, of that unit, and that is yours. In a co-op, co you don't own physically any piece of that property, but you share in the corporation that owns the co-op. So the approval process is a little different. You have to go through the co-op board. They have to approve your joining of the co-op and they will do interviews, they'll review your finances, and it could be a multi-step process to get the co-op approval. When you buy a condo, you're not interviewed by the association. As long as the condominium meets your requirements and you financially are capable of purchasing the unit within that building, you're in. You don't have any personality conflicts, you don't have any issues with a board member potentially keeping you from being able to live in that building. So um, like a condo, you have to follow the co-op association's rules. Um, so it limits what you can do in your unit and what procedures you have to follow. So you need to make sure that you're, you're clear on those going in. You would have to contribute to monthly maintenance fees and those fees would cover any building mortgages, your share of all of the ta taxes and all of the upkeep, you know, from the heating system to the roof and everything in between. And also for the upkeep and availability of the amenities and the union status of any staff. So those are the things that make a co-op different. The biggest part of the difference is that you don't own any physical property. You simply own a piece of the corporation or project that owns that property. So there can be a whole lot more rules, there can be a whole lot more regulation, and it could be a whole lot more restrictive depending on what the co-op is. So if a community is a co-op in this area, it would be listed under the disclosure section just like a POA or a condo is, and this document would be part of the listing in RAIN. You're used to seeing it. It looks just like the condo and POA docs, whereas the develop is known as this, whether it's a newer conversion or if it's a resale, and then it's, it's signed by the buyer and seller. Then you would also get your 
disclose your acknowledgement of the receipt. You're going to get a co-op package like you get a condo package, like you get a POA package. You're going to get a package full of all the disclosures, all the statements, all the rules, all the everything. And then this is your acknowledgement of that receipt of those documents. So mostly, I mean, as far as it goes with our contracts and the way we sell real estate, a co-op is very similar to a condo in the fact that you have to disclose it exists and you have to get all those documents gathered and provide them to the buyer for review. The difference is the buyer does not own physical tangible property and the buyer has to be approved by the co-op board to join the co-op. As with anything, if you run into questions or problems, please reach out to a mentor or give me a call and we will get you figured out.